Coming up on Mustang News, students are on alert after a sexual assault occurred at the Delta Chi fraternity house this past weekend. Cal Poly students are looking to raise the roof this weekend. The exact opposite of what happened last year on St. Fratty's. We have the footage from last year's fiasco caught on tape. And we have an update on the California Faculty Association strike and how that will affect students. Broadcasting from Studio 300 on Cal Poly's campus, you're watching Mustang News. Hello and thank you, thank you for joining us here on today's 30 minute edition of Mustang News. I'm Allison Royal. And I'm Leah Horner. Mustang News starts now. Students received a message from the California Emergency Alert System this past Monday. Cal Poly administrators say a sexual assault occurred over this past weekend at the Delta Chi Fraternity House near Spanos Stadium. The attack happened between midnight and 1 a.m. on Sunday. The alert said an unidentified male held the victim down, but she was able to fight back and get away. Because of concerns due to privacy, the police have not released any more information about the assault. Cal Poly Safer advises students to always be aware of their surroundings and trust their instincts. For more information about how sexual assaults happen and how you can support the Cal Poly Safer organization, please visit the Dean of Students website. Cal Poly administrators are hoping to prevent another St. Fratty's Day celebration. They have come up with a plan and this year, fraternities have strict party guidelines to ensure a safe and fun weekend. The hope is that the weekend will not end like last year. One year ago, a rooftop collapsed, sending eight party goers to the hospital. It was all caught on tape and even put the campus on the forefront of international news. So for the party registration, we have guest lists. So a lot of fraternities put down guest lists. It can range from girlfriends, boyfriends, male friends, female friends, but it is a guest list in advance. So uh, out-of-staters, Cuesta kids will probably not get invited. They're mostly just friends of people in the fraternity. Fines will be doubled at $1,000 this weekend, but that is not stopping Cal Poly students from having some Irish fun. The party must go on, and administration has required that all fraternities not on social probation must register their party through the university. To ensure that individual parties do not get too out of hand, the party registration must include the location and guest list. The idea is that if the fraternities each host their own parties at separate houses, then the expected 3,000 partygoers will not gather in one area, causing high risks like last year. UPD says the fines get go into effect this Friday and will carry through the weekend. The California Faculty Association announced plans for a potential strike in spring quarter. Mustang News reporter Aiden Matthews has an update on the story. All 23 CSU campuses announced plans for a potential strike to occur spring quarter. The strike will take place if CSU representatives do not reach a salary agreement with the Faculty Association by the proposed strike date. I'm not going to, I'll strike so I won't be, my classes will be cancelled. Political science professor Martin Battle says he is one of many Cal Poly faculty members planning to cancel their classes during the days of the strike. He says Cal Poly faculty has given more to the school than they have received. I wasn't here when the furloughs happened. Most of my colleagues voted to, to take effectively a pay cut to keep the university going. They've not received any, they've never got anything back from that faculty have given and given and given. Cal Poly President Jeffrey Armstrong sent a campus-wide email urging students to not participate in or support the faculty strike. Armstrong also wrote that the school is confident that an agreement will be met over faculty salaries, ending the possibility of a strike. Professor Battle believes the faculty's well-being should have been the school's first priority. And people I think come to Cal Poly partly because it's such a lovely area. They don't come for the lovely buildings, they don't come for the great administration, they often come because it's very good faculty. If a strike does occur, Cal Poly urges its students to check with their professors if classes are to be held during the proposed strike time. Aiden Matthews, Mustang News. The proposed dates for the strike are April 13th through the 15th and April 18th and 19th. And while faculty strike is being planned, another strike is also happening. The Students for Life Club on campus is against plan Planned Parenthood, and other students on campus disagree. While the Pro-Life Club was passing out pamphlets to educate Cal Poly about Planned Parenthood's recent video scandal, protesters gathered in front of them with signs and chanted phrases like, health care is a right, not a privilege. Both parties say their goal is to remain peaceful and educate students on these issues. 
Graduating seniors will be experiencing new changes to spring commencement in June. The Cal Poly Parent and Family Program sets up and runs commencement every year and is making some changes to the way spring commencement is organized. One addition will be the reading of students' names as they cross the stage. Cal Poly Parent and Family Program student assistant James Nicholas says it's the first time student name readers will be added to the commencement ceremony in recent history. Another change is that the start time of the Saturday evening ceremony for the College of Agriculture, Food, and Environmental Sciences and the College of Science and Mathematics will move from 5 p.m. to 4 p.m. An orientation program for underrepresented students has been canceled. Mustang News reporter Jordan Dunn has more on how the university plans to integrate the program into WOW. With the stuff that's been happening on campus where there's been a lack of inclusivity, um, the school kind of took that as saying OUR is very exclusive and that it's only for people of color, which obviously it's not. OUR, which stands for Orientation for United Raza, is an orientation program stemmed from MECHA, geared towards integrating students of color into the Cal Poly community. However, for the 2016 orientation, OUR will no longer be its own program and will be merged into WOW, but some students don't think this is ideal. OUR helps us with that safe space. It helps us better transition from um, high school to college, especially this college. And OUR was the place that helped me find the friends that kept me here. Catherine Meralda, business senior and elected coordinator for OUR, says that the program is important because it allows quieter students of color to more easily find their place on campus. Meralda and two other coordinators met with orientation leaders to discuss the future of OUR early this quarter. I feel that the campus is lacking in its understanding of why we have OUR and why we um, need OUR, I guess. And what me and the other two coordinators are trying to do is help the school understand that it's not just a place for us to ex like to exclude ourselves from the rest of the campus. It's, it really is our safe space. The OUR coordinators what? are currently working on a resolution to keep the program a part of orientation. During our meeting, it was just more of a, so the school is just going to integrate OUR into WOW, so OUR is no longer a thing. And it, like, it threw us for a loop because that's not what we thought we were going in there to meet for. Jordan Dunn, Mustang News. The OUR coordinator's proposal will determine if the program will stand on its own for the 2016 WOW. One Cal Poly student is coming back from Kansas City, Missouri, but not empty-handed. Kenna Lewis won the national championship at the Young Farmers and Ranchers meet, beating out other agriculturalists from all over the country. Lewis won at the state level first and then packed her bags and headed to Missouri to debate different topics impacting agriculture. We're honestly just as excited as I was, so that was cool to have a bunch of people there um, who are also supporting you. But I was also pretty surprised because the other people were really, really good, especially in the last two rounds. So it was just a good feeling. When Lewis made it to the final four, her last debate topic was technology and agriculture, a topic close to her heart. Plans to promote California wines to the Cuban market are now in progress after a Cal Poly professor and other California vintners visited Cuba in February. Wine and viticulture professor Marianne McGarry Wolf joined California vintners at the Wine Symposium from January 31st to February 3rd. The purpose of the symposium was to make a plan to be able to export California wines to Cuba. Wolf says that the Cubans were very interested in Cal Poly's Learn by Doing motto. They were so excited to learn that our students, and this is the exciting thing about our major, our students learn how to grow the grapes, make the wine, and then market it. And that brought so much excitement from the Cuban people that it really, really warmed my heart. Wolf said seeing many Cal Poly alumni and even one of her former students at the symposium made her realize how impactful Cal Poly is on the wine industry. Although no students attended the symposium, Professor Wolf said she and her husband, who is a business professor at Cal Poly, were both able to go to the symposium. After learning so much information about the wine industry in Cuba and the Cuban culture, Professor Wolf and her husband were able to pass on what they learned to their students, further supporting the Learn by Doing experience. Do you ever wonder about the future of technology? Cal Poly is hosting an event at Spanos Theater that could have all of your answers. And see the results of this year's Sorority's Best Dance Crew competition. All this after the break.
String five. Chief Technology Officer and co-founder of StringFi, Dave Evans, will be hosting a talk on the future of technology next week. Dave Evans is a futurist who is passionate about the evolution of technology. Evans is an expert on emerging technologies and has been called one of the 150 most influential thought leaders in the world. Evans' views have been shared in Forbes magazine, The New York Times, CNN, and MSNBC, among others. This talk will be on Thursday, March 17th from 1 to 2 p.m. in Spanos Theater. This event is free and open to the public. Your commute might not be as bad thanks to the city of San Luis Obispo's largest transportation project ever. 17 months and $24 million later, the Los Osos Valley Road Traffic Relief Project is nearly finished. The sole purpose of the project is to widen Los Osos Valley Road. The popular and formerly congested road now has two lanes of traffic heading eastbound and two lanes of traffic heading westbound, as well as a new bike path and new sidewalk. Project manager and three-time Cal Poly alum Kyle Rowland says the busy intersection has needed improvement since he was a Cal Poly student, and the project will make commuting easier for everyone. I've been involved in the project itself for about two and a half years, and I've dedicated a large portion of my work life towards this project. Uh, so it is neat to see this finally come to fruition here at the very end. The project is finishing up a few months ahead of schedule, with a ribbon-cutting ceremony planned for the end of this month. The project will be completely finished in early April. Hundreds of people are finally dry after hiking up the Cuesta Ridge in the pouring rain this weekend to see local bands perform for Shebang 5. The bands carried their equipment up the muddy hill despite the downpour, risking harm to their expensive musical instruments. The concert was cut more than two hours short by Mother Nature, but organizers are glad that they could still help out a good cause. Although the event was free, guests could still make donations to the Land Conservancy of San Luis Obispo. The 6th Annual Sorority's Best Dance Crew Competition was held last Thursday at Chumash Auditorium. Mustang News reporter Amanda Fridley has the update on how the competition went. Ten sororities came out to dance in the 6th Annual Sorority's Best Dance Crew Competition. And Gamma Phi Beta is hailed reigning champion two years in a row. I was actually really not like, oh yeah, we got it. Like, I was kind of freaked out and he said our name and I was just lost it. Just me and all my friends just, ah! Ah! <laughs> The competition this year raised more than $5,000, a $1,000 increase from last year. Theta Chi member Tyler Scholl says they want to take Cal Poly Stan's competition success onto other campuses. Uh, the event has actually gained so much popularity that when we, we actually have our own trip where we go and visit other schools, and we've basically started Shorty's Best Dance Crew in San Jose, as well as, I think, Chico did it once or twice, I think, and maybe one other university as well. The dance competition isn't just a way to raise money. It's also just a way to have fun. It's so much fun. There's something for everyone to see. Amanda Fridley, Mustang News. The Theta Chi fraternity says they plan to keep the dance competition going for many more years to come. Coming up after the break, Daniel Park will have our weather forecast for the week. Stay tuned. My new dad teaches me all kinds of stuff. Hmm. Sure. He helps me with homework. That would be 3.6795. Thanks. Yep. He helps me with my decision making. I wouldn't use this one. Ever. And he's even teaching me how to drive. And that's why cars have bumpers. I'm learning so much. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Thousands of kids in foster care will take you just as you are. When I was in foster care, I never knew when I would have to move. So I always had my suitcase ready to go. Then one day, I was adopted. My new parents opened their hearts and home to me. My parents cooked my favorite breakfast for me every morning. My parents take me on trips I never thought I would go on. They gave me a home and an even better reason to use that suitcase. My parents aren't perfect, but they're perfect for me. My new mom and I have a lot in common. <sighs> the great outside. We both love the outdoors. It's so shiny. That's not a flower. 
We both love geology. Oh, look. An igneous one. That's not a rock. And she knows a lot about wildlife. <gasps> a labradoodle. <laughs> That's not a dog. Hanging out has been kind of fun. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Thousands of kids in foster care will take you just as you are. Look at me. Hey. Raymond, look at Mommy. Maybe the light hurts his eyes. Maybe she's just not hungry. Maybe he can't hear us. <gasps> Maybe we're not stimulating him enough. Maybe it's a phase. Avoiding eye contact is one early sign of autism. Learn the others today. The sooner it's diagnosed, the better. Hey guys, my name is Daniel Park and I'll be your weatherman for today, coming at you with a sunny smile. Unfortunately, my smile would be the only thing sunny this week, as you can see in the five-day forecast. What you have is a general precipitation on Friday, Sunday, and Monday, where you have thunderstorms on Friday. You'll have rain on Sunday and Monday as well. Now, looking behind me, what you see is green are the clouds containing rain. And what can happen is behind me is a huge weather, um, excuse me, a weather storm coming at Northern California, which will hit Sacramento and San Francisco. We are at the very tip of it, as you can see. So we will be getting very little rain compared to the rest of Northern California. So yes, bring your umbrellas, but at the same time, don't fret it too much. Unfortunately, what this also means is that um, in San Luis Obispo, um, it will be heading into our reservoirs. And looking behind me, this is for March 9th and 10th. You see the clouds up in near Eureka, Northern California. As you can see, that's where the rain will mostly be. Some rain in Sacramento, but as you can see for us, it will be somewhat clear this week. However, there will also be clouds coming in, which is why, which explains the rain on Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and Monday. I hate to be the bearer of bad news, guys. I love to smile. And anyway, looking at this map in California, as you can see, Los Angeles also, too, is getting somewhat rain because of the El Nino, um, because of the El Nino effect. Looking at this inter graph, interactive graph behind me, the rain per month, as you can see, is a general precipitation increase. As you can see from El Nino, the temperature increased it from 2.2 to 5.5 right next to my shoulder. My name is Daniel Park, and I'm told to wrap it up. Back to you guys at the desk. <laughs> Thanks so much, Daniel. Former First Lady Nancy Reagan passed away this week. Mustang News reporter Daniel Park has more on the death of an Amer Republican American icon. A motorcade carrying the body of former First Lady Nancy Reagan arrived at the Reagan Library in Simi Valley Wednesday. She passed away on Sunday at her home in Los Angeles. Eight Secret Service agents who served the Reagans acted as pallbearers. A small ceremony was held for family and friends prior to the public viewing. The former First Lady will lay in repose at the Reagan Library until Thursday evening. She will be laid to rest on Friday, next to her husband, former President Ronald Reagan. First Lady Michelle Obama will be attending the funeral, along with Democratic presidential candidate Hillary Clinton. Nancy Reagan died Sunday in her home in Los Angeles of congestive heart failure. She was revered in Republican politics and known as a fierce protector of her husband, both personally and politically. However, her death has both sides of the political aisle praising her courage and loyalty. Obviously, she was uh, already advanced in age, but could not have been more gracious and more charming to myself and Michelle when we first came into office. Uh, you know, I think it's been well documented, uh, the extraordinary love that she uh, had for her husband. Yesterday, we got the news that Nancy Reagan had passed away, and we're very saddened by her loss. She also launched the Just Say No anti-drugs campaign and advocated for stem cell research later in life. She was 94 years old. Daniel Park, Mustang News. President Obama has ordered all flags to be flown at half-staff in honor of the former First Lady. The public can pay respects at the Presidential Library on Wednesday and Thursday. And coming up after the break, Jordan Dunn has your sports for this week. Maybe he's really focused. Hey, Michael. Michael. Maybe he likes spinning the wheels. Maybe he just loves trucks. Maybe he's just being a boy. Preoccupation with objects is one early sign of autism. Learn the others today. The sooner it's diagnosed, the better. A boy born in Joplin, Missouri was fascinated by anything with wheels and a motor. The odds of him winning both the Daytona 500 and the Brickyard 400 in the same year, one in 195 million. 
The odds of a child being diagnosed with autism, one in 68. I'm Jamie McMurray, and my niece has autism. Learn more at autismspeaks.org slash signs. Taking care of a family member can lead to plenty of questions. Fortunately, there's a place to get the answers for them and for you. Find articles, tips, and tools from experts and others who have been in your place. The Caregiving Resource Center at aarp.org slash caregiving. Hello, I'm Jordan Dunn here with the sports highlights for this week. The Cal Poly men's baseball team is 10-2 so far this season after winning three games in a row against the University of San Francisco this weekend. The Mustangs played a doubleheader on Friday, March 4th at 1 p.m., winning with a final score of 2-1 and played a game 6 p.m., finishing it off with a win and a final score of 10-5. The Mustangs were supposed to play the University of San Francisco Dons against, on Saturday, but the game was postponed due to Sunday rain. The Mustangs picked right back up on Sunday and defeated the Dons with a final score of 7-6. On Tuesday, the Mustangs played Pepperdine in their first of 10 away games in a row and lost 12-4. Their next game will be Friday, March 11th at the Grand Canyon University at 6 p.m. Cal Poly is home to an out-of-ordinary baseball cheering section named after a Cal Poly baseball legend. The Krukos Clubhouse is home to the alumni, former baseball players, and fans of Cal Poly baseball. They have designated Kruko's only seating section above the Cal Poly dugout and can be heard loud and clear until the ninth inning of any game. The members of the section is named after former Cal Poly pitcher Mike Kruko, who is now a commentator for the San Francisco Giants. The group of cheers, fa cheering fans, players against opposing teams, and entertain the Cal Poly baseball players standing in the dugout. It's all fun and games for everyone involved. The baseball players find Kruko's members are faithful fans of the baseball program. Um, one, they're rooting for us all the time. Um, they don't leave after the fourth inning if we're not winning. Um, and other than that, I mean, anywhere in California doesn't have something like this. So it doesn't stack up to anything on the West Coast, like, like Jared was saying. There's some southern schools that have it, but on the West Coast, we're the only ones. So, and so the tickets, uh, you get two tickets for $850. Um, but it's a donation to the school. And in return to that, you get... Unlimited beer, uh, hot dogs, peanuts, chips, soda, water, beer. pretty much anything you think of. And you get a great seat right here next to third base. For season tickets, contact, contact the Cal Poly ticket office at 805-866-GO-STANGS. Men's and women's basketball are down in Orange County for the annual Big West Conference Tournament. At the Bren Event Center at UCI, women's basketball saw their season end Wednesday night with a 54-52 loss to Long Beach State in the quarterfinals of the Big West Tournament. Faith Minaw and her girls finished the season with a record of 15 wins and 16 losses. Meanwhile, the men's basketball team will begin their Big West Conference Tournament with the quarterfinals matchup against UCI at the Honda Center in Anaheim tonight at 6. Cal Poly has lost both games to UCI this past year, losing at home in overtime by a score of 78 to 72, and in February and losing to Irvine last week 72 to 62. Cal Poly is seven and six in their first tournament game in the program's history. There are many ways in which you can stay tuned for the game. You can listen to ESPN 1280 for play-by-play -play from Tom Barkett, or you can tune in to Fox Prime Ticket on your television. A former Cal Poly soccer player made his professional debut this past weekend at MLS. Fullback Kit Colby made his first team debut with MLS side San Jose Earthquakes this past weekend. Colby was subbed in on the 45th minute, uh, Sean, Sean Francis, only picking up a foul on his 45 professional minutes. San Jose ended up beating Colorado 1-0. Colby had another chance to play this weekend as San Jose welcomed the reigning MLS champions, Portland Timbers. Colby was a four-year starter at Cal Poly and was drafted 49th overall in the third round of the 2016 MLS Super Draft. That's all the sports we have for this week. Back to you guys at the desk.
All right, thank you so much, Jordan. Coming up after the break, we have more from Sorority's Best Dance Crew. They say that when you're facing extreme danger, your life flashes before you. If you think that's sad, consider facing it before you even have enough life to flash before your eyes. Deaths and injuries can be prevented by using the right car seat. Visit safercar.gov slash the right seat to know what is appropriate for each age and size. A full life measured in seats starts with the right ones early on. Car crashes are a leading killer of children 1 to 13. Learn how to prevent deaths and injuries by using the right car seat for your child's age and size. watching online videos like this one. Brushing for two minutes now can save your child from severe tooth pain later. Two minutes, twice a day. They have the time. I love taking care of my mom. It wasn't easy at first. She learned how to better communicate her needs. And you learned how to not ignore yours. I discovered how to make healthier meals. And I discovered how much I enjoyed them. Becoming a caregiver is a learning experience for everyone. Find articles, tips, and tools from experts and others who have been in your place. The so Caregiving Resource Center at aarp.org slash caregiving. That's all the time we have for today. You can check mustangnews.net for continuous updates. I'm Leah Horner. And I'm Allison Royal. You can also find us on Charter Channel 2. We will close the show today with performances from over the years from Sorority's Best Dance Crew competition, which benefits Big Brothers Big Sisters. Thanks for watching and have a great day. If you get what I get, what would you say? She waxed it all off. Mr. Miyagi and them suicide doors. Are we... <laughs>